Hello and welcome to Milwaukee County Stadium, a jam-packed Milwaukee County Stadium this evening. I'm here with my son Nicholas Lamponi. Yes, thank you. And I am Greg Lamponi. And we'll be announcing the first inning of tonight's game between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Cleveland Indians. We're hoping to find Yon get his 3,000th hit. Yes. He is up second, and we might be able to broadcast that. And hopefully uh, we will be able to announce that to you. Uh, it was a rainy day today, but it seems to have cleared up nicely, and it's a very comfortable evening. As I said, uh, Nicholas, uh, do you think we've got a full crowd tonight, I think, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's too many empty seats, so we've got the Boz on the mound, and Yount uh, going for his 3,000th hit. So... Basio finishes up his uh, warm-up pitches here. I look out and my left window and there's still cars coming into the bird game. Yeah, that's uh, right. And I look over here beyond the parking lot and there, there's uh, quite a line there also. So, Well, before we uh, start this game, I'd like to thank my brother-in-law, Tom Tilly, for giving us this opportunity to take over his place. And uh, he wasn't able to be here tonight due to a political commitment, so he was very kind to let us uh, use this opportunity and bring this game to you. So, uh, thank you, Tom and Carol and Andy. The little tornado. For, uh, for this opportunity. Okay, here we go. Kenny Lofton coming to the plate the speedy center fielder for the Cleveland Indians. He's batting 278. 80 runs batted in, 135 hits and 5 home runs. Let's see what he can do. Yes. Batting left-handed against Basio, the right-hander. And here's the first pitch of the game. Steve Reich won. We'll start off on the right foot. are playing way in. Strike two on that. Uh, looked like a curveball to me, Nick. What do you think? Yeah. Well, he's ahead out of him. 0-2. Oh, and, and he it's hits well. it weekly to first. And, and it's one out. Put out by Paul Molitor. Montelder, number 33, Thomas Howard. Betty left, plays left field in the average of 290. Also a left batter. Yeah, the crowd seems to have quieted down a little bit now. Like I say. Here's the pitch. It's sharply. In the second pitch. And a to Scotty Fletcher, and he makes the out. Second baseman, number nine, Carlos Bayerga. Carlos Bayerga, batting 306, the, the second baseman. Let's see if the brew crew can go one, two, three. Yeah, that'd be nice. Get out of the first inning and uh, see what the Brewers can do. I believe there are how many games out of first, Nick? Four and a half. Four and a half out of first, so very much in the pennant race as well as uh, a milestone for Robin Young. A strike one pitch by Basio. Yes, the, the game was delayed a little bit tonight. We're about 40 minutes behind uh, schedule here. We illegally parked our car, so hopefully it won't be towed away when we get back <laughs> to get here on time to give you this broadcast. The next pitch was a ball. Basio is behind pitching leader in strikeouts behind Wegman. Wegman with 106 and Basio with 101. Come on, Basio, get those five. Oh, it's there's one hit. Fly. Deep to Vonnie. He's back. He's, He's got, got it. He's got it. Nice At the pitch. wall. Nice pitch. And the Cleveland Indians go one, two, three in the first. 
Well, Nick, while well, we got a little uh, time here between the innings, who would you like to say hello to uh, back home? Uh, I'd like to say hi uh, to my mom and my sister and my cat. Thank you. And don't forget our rabbit. Yes, I'd like to say hello to my lovely wife, Lynn, and my darling daughter, Amy. Also, uh, my, uh, my parents and Mr. and Mrs. James Tilly. And a host of other friends, Warren and Dick and Jerry. Uh, here on this, uh, hopefully, a history-making at bat for Robin Yount. He's batting second this evening. Behind uh, Pat Listash, who is Nick. He's batting uh, 298. I think he's uh, he's got a good chance at Rookie of the Year honors. Yes. In fact, he was at our uh, baseball banquet, and we were uh, Nick was fortunate enough to get his autograph. So. Hopefully he'll have a equally long career as Robin Young. And I'm Milwaukee hoping Bears. that he can steal those 50 bases to beat the record of the rookie. Uh, yes, he's uh, really taking the place of the igniter with a, uh, like I say, his batting average is 298, and uh, I know he's very close to uh, recording a record for steals at, for a rookie. So the uh, pitcher for the Cleveland Indian is Jose Mesa. He's a right-handed pitcher with a record of six and ten, but his last three outings or so have been—he's uh, been pitching very well. So hopefully the Brewers will be able to get to him early here and get a lead and pick up a game on Toronto. And the crowd—you uh, will hear a. Deafening uh, ovation, I'm sure, when he comes to when Robin comes to the plate. Yes, I'm sure. Coaching at third base for the Rivers, number ten, Duffy Dyer. Coaching at first base, number fourteen, Tim And I'm going to turn this over to uh, my colleague for the start of this inning for the Milwaukee Brewers. And Pat Listash up to bat. He has an average of 298. Runs batted in 81 and. It, 144 hits, no home runs. Maybe he'll get one right off the bat. Yes, left-handed batter against the uh, right-handed pitching Jose Mesa. And uh, we're just about ready to go here. So Lishtash steps in. He's got kind of a wide open stance. Takes the first pitch inside. And it's a ball. The outfield playing him fairly shallow. More of a singles hitter. There's a oh. bunt foul. One and one to cons. Listash batting third. Uh, as the far Brewers as the batting, batting leaders. leaders. Yes. Molitor at 321. Bichette 298 and Listash at a 298 also. So the wind up in the pitch, foul tip. One and two. Boy, it turned out to be a beautiful evening though, ain't it? Yep. No, really no win to speak of. And the rain has held off after a real downpour during the day. Here's the pitch. Outside. Upstairs. Ball two, two and two. Robin on deck. Hoping to get that 3,000th hit. Yes. And here's the pitch from Mesa. <laughs> Fouled off Fouled into to the, the stand. Yeah, that just below the mezzanine there. Into the, actually the lower deck. So Listash fighting him off. Two and two the count. No outs in the bottom of the first. I haven't seen a score yet from uh, New York, Nick, who are playing the Baltimore Orioles today. Yes, we're all rooting for the Yankees. And here's, here's the pitch. 
high and outside. Oh, three. Yeah, it could possibly have someone on base when he comes to uh, comes to bat. I'd really like to see a home run uh, from Yount. That would be a oh a great way to get three thousand. That's right. That's what I was gonna say. Still, people coming in as we wait for the next pitch. Right. Yeah. Here's the pitch. Fouled off into the upper deck and bounces down. Bounces off someone's hand, but is caught. But uh, with the cars coming in, I don't know. It doesn't look like there's too much more room here for anyone. Definitely not. But. Uh, The count uh, is full now, three and two. And here's the pitch. Oh, it's fouled off again in the lower deck. Off someone's hand and then caught. Right next to me is Robin's Nest. Yes, this is the last game of the homestand. People are hoping where that's where you'll, you'll hit the ball. Yeah. Uh, this three-game stand, which the Brewers are trying to sweep. Here's and here hit. comes one. Deep two. Hit to right Howard. Oh, field, I had a little trouble with that, but he gathered it in. And, and here now he is, Young! Robin Young! Standing Yacht. ovation for Robin Young, Robin number 19, Yacht. the kid. Flash bulbs everywhere going off. He's... Digging himself in. And uh, the right handed batter is ready. Like he said, a definite applause. Here is the pitch. The pitch. Low. Low. On the, way. the crowd doesn't like that. They don't want to see a walk. No, it's uh, Robin's got to have something to hit, though. It's, he looked at that first one. Here the crowd is rooting again. It builds in momentum here a little bit. Here's the pitch. He's ready. Inside. Ooh. Ball two. There was a blinding flash of a million light bulbs from cameras going off. Two here and all the counts. One down. Two and all. Here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. Foul back. Yes, he had a good rip at it, though. Strike one. That's a souvenir for you. Two and one right there. That's a souvenir. The crowd is Holding fired up Holding at 2,999. The count, two and one. Here's the pitch. Eh. It's hit. Oh. Fouled off. Fouled to the upper deck. Two and two. Two and two. Let's hope not for a strike off. Oh, don't jinx him now, Nicholas. Sorry. He's going to stand in there. I think he's pretty good. I never said that, Robin. All right. The pitcher's ready. And he delivers. The pitch. Hold oh, on. Back again. Oh, he's making a little contact, Nicholas, with the ball. Yes, at least that's good. Following three pitches back. Count two and two. And uh, here he comes with the pitch. the pitch. In the dirt. Full count now. And if you get to walk, let's hope not for the terror, terrible yes. thing that happened last night. <laughs> A pitcher almost killed. Here we go. Here Full we go. Count now. It is. Come on, you. I got a good feeling about this. I, I don't know. Too. Come on. There he is. Uh, the pitcher ready. Follow Follow back. Up again. Robin hanging tough. Come on, Robin. These people want to hit. Yes, I'm, I'm sure he'd like to give him one, Nick. The crowd again. Everyone on its feet. Clapping their hands. Follow it back away. again. That looked like a changeup. Yes. Is there a foul limit here? Because I think we're going to keep going on here. 
Yeah, I think we could catch one uh, at our uh, recording spot out here. Yes, there we come, and the pitch. Here's the pitch. A little dribbler to the first baseman. Oh. And he's out. The pitch, first baseman taking it unassisted. So we'll have to wait for his second at bat today. Sorry we couldn't announce that for you, but uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Tom Tilly for giving us the opportunity for uh, this wonderful experience. Nicholas, don't you think so? Yes. And uh, the igniter's up. Let's see if, what he can do. Yeah, still some a chance to get something going here. Rob, uh, Paul batting a three at 3:21, playing first base tonight. And Mesa with the pitch. Low. And two outs, nobody on. The second pitch to Paul E is low again. Ball two. Maybe we can get uh, something rolling here after two outs, huh, Nick? Maybe. Anybody else you'd like to say hello to on our historic taping? No. Hi now. Three and oh. Well, Mesa might have tired himself out there uh, pitching to, to Robin. But. Uh, Here's the pitch. 3 0 to Pauly. Low. And Pauly takes for ball four. Vaughn with some power. Uh, we're just inside the foul pole in left field, so if Vaughn could uh, hit one out this way. That's get a very good chance. 19 home runs, that's not bad. Leads the uh, club, I believe, Nicholas, in home runs. Batting 215. Vaughn is batting 300 in his last 10 games. Yeah, so he's been hitting the ball well. In fact, I came to the uh, Toronto game a couple weeks back here and saw Vaughn hit a line drive home run that took about two seconds to get out of the park. So he definitely has some power. I also like to say hello, uh, hello to one of my colleagues, Bob Euchre, sitting in the booth around the corner from us here. Almost in sight. <laughs> and I'd like to say hello to all my... Uh, Mesa, trying to pick off Molitor. Yeah, right. Workers at Lampone Jewelers. Sam and Joe, Kenny, Lester, John. When Robin whole... Young came into their store. Yes, and we had the privilege of uh, Robin Young coming into our store. And uh, having his uh, a necklace fixed for his daughter, so and he he does seem like a very quiet individual. Yes, he's just when he's in the locker room, he doesn't want to be all picture taken. He just says, "I like to play baseball. That's what I like to do." Right. Yeah. Very uh, proud to have him in our community, and for 19 years, it's been a very good role model for. Our kids, Second and that's strike three. And that ends the inning, Vaughn striking out. So uh, it's nothing, nothing at the end of the first. Thanks again, everybody. Bye. A moment Milwaukee Brewer fans and certainly Robin Yount will never forget. A hit that puts Robin <laughs> right smack dab into the history books. And I can watch that hit over and over again. Still seems exciting. Yeah, I think the applause has finally died down out there. But I tell you, it went on for, what, eight, ten minutes mm -hmm. nonstop last night. It's something that people will talk about over and over again. And as our Tim Blot shows us, 
you may have help remembering that moment with all the Robin memorabilia. Been a long, long time for him, but uh, my oh my, what a night. What a night and what a day as fans are still talking about hit number 3000 by Robin Yount. It's so intense just, you know, waiting for this uh, historical moment and then, you know, he plays with you for the first seven innings and boom, it's there. Or if it's not a P-72, it is not an original Robin Yount bat. Okay. Overnight, the value of Robin Yount collectibles nearly doubled. His rookie card that yesterday sold for about $160 is today worth up to 300 and fans are buying. Programs, cards, whatever. Uh, everybody wants a piece of Robin. Yount has always been among the more popular Brewer players, and that was demonstrated by the support he got from fans all week long. Over the past three days, more than 100,000 people have come to witness history inside County Stadium. But the historic events here may not be over. That's because Yount and the rest of the team are still in the pennant race. And as they boarded the bus for Baltimore today, fans were busy buying tickets for the next homestand. We're Brewer fans, and I think next year I'm thinking about getting uh, season tickets. The 0-1 pitch. Swings, and there it is! There hasn't been that kind of excitement toward the Brewers since they won the pennant in 82. Now with a new pennant race and Yount's historic hitting, the Brewers hope the fans will keep coming back for more. Tim Blotz, today's TMJ4. And finally, getting some national attention, as you might have seen at the end of the NBC Nightly News. By the way, beginning Monday, fans from last night's game can take their ticket stubs to County Stadium and get a special certificate commemorating Robin's big hit. Well, uh, Brewer fans certainly have had a special relationship with Robin ever since he broke in with the team back in 1974. He's won two American League MVP awards. He's led the team to the World Series and will be in the Hall of Fame. Join Hank Stoddard tonight for Robin Does It, a special report on Yount's career. That's tonight at 8.30 on today's TMJ4. Well, uh, rain held off last night. Uh, today's sunshine, a few clouds. Paul will tell us if the uh, correct <laughs> forecast or and incorrect forecast. <laughs> <laughs> no, you nailed it yeah, last it night. Yeah, it stopped just in time, that's for sure. <laughs> and the weather today, you know what it's going Big achievement. Henry joins us next with sports. Getting 3,000 hits in a Major League Baseball career is a big deal. The last person to accept that fact was Robin Yount. But last night, the significance of that achievement finally penetrated. With the huge crowd standing, cheering, and flashing cameras at each plate appearance, Yount admitted later he uncharacteristically lost his focus. Striking out to go 0 for 3, he tosses his bat to the ground in disgust. But the next time up, he lashes a sharp single to right, and the moment has arrived. Fans, teammates, and yes, hardened media types are caught up in the emotion. Appropriately enough, the first two people to reach Robin on first base are 15-year teammates Jim Gantner and Paul Molitor. And I just hit the bag and turned around, and, and Gumby was there, and I mean, and Paul was right behind him. So obviously, that you know, it, it's hard to describe something like that. It's not like that. It happens every day, and um, it's just a, a very special feeling. To come through the way he did, it's just it's just so uh, symbolic of his career. A lot of times, you know, he, he he the greater the pressure, you know, the more he would able to respond, and that's exactly what happened tonight. I'm so happy for him that uh, you know, play with a guy with like his 3,000 base hits doesn't come every day, and uh, I'm just you know, I was really nervous tonight every time he came up to the plate. I think there were some fans brought tears to their eyes. What was your immediate reaction when that ball fell in? <laughs> I was. I was pretty well choked up too myself, you know, and then watching the replays of him when he was a kid and uh, watching the video they had on the big board, uh, I was pretty choked up. It's been a beautiful relationship, and that's, that's the reason this team's been as cohesive as it's been is because of the leadership of those three guys. So as I saw him standing out there, the accomplishment of Robin and, and the leadership of the three guys, I thought it was a really wonderful experience. Tonight at 8.30 on today's TMJ4, I'll be hosting a half-hour special featuring highlights of Yount's 19-year career with the Brewers and tributes from some of baseball's all-time greats. The only discordant note last night came in the ninth inning when the Indians rallied for a pair of runs to win 5-4. The loss dropped the Brewers five and a half games behind Toronto with a seven-game road trip starting tomorrow night in Baltimore. Having lost Larry Bird to retirement, the Boston Celtics today brought in a replacement. 
But we'll tell you about that in a moment. We're going to show you the baseball scores for San Francisco. One over uh, Houston, 5-2. to two. And one game still going on. The Reds, 1-0 leaders over the Atlanta.